Okay, on let's think aloud. dot com. This is one interview that I was waiting to do, and I was waiting to make you guys hear. Anshul Dhara. We heard her a couple of days back. Incredible woman who walked more than five hundred kilometers from Mumbai to Goa in twenty six days. Now, why she did it, how she did it, I have no clue, and that's exactly the reason why we are talking to Anshul Dhara today. Hello, Anshul. Hi, Imani. How are you? I am very good. How are you doing? Good, and I'm so happy and glad to be talking to you finally and doing this interview. <laughs> yes, sir. Finally, it happened. <laughs> I know. So you have walked like so much. Of course, uh, we we'll talk about all that later. First, tell me about the Archal Dhara that we do not know. Who is Archal Dhara? What do you do? Ah, uh, Archal Dhara is a very, very simple woman who lives in Bombay. I'm a photographer. I'm, a, I'm I mostly do weddings. Besides uh, shooting weddings, I. believe in doing certain offbeat things like the walk that happened i am a walker by choice and it's it's my passion now so yeah why did you do the walk i mean you were busy in photography and i believe wedding photography which means also it keeps you a lot busy with very little time for everything else why did the walk happen you know walk uh, specifically was not a planned event or um, a project it just was a random thought that came to me when i was taking a walk last to last year as i was walking in the rains and i don't know how it just i don't just don't know you know there are certain things that you don't know why you want to do mm-hmm. and how they enter your mind so it just entered my mind that i wanted to do a long walk from bombay to goa goa because goa is where i want to settle down it's my second home uh, my husband and myself we anyway go to goa quite often during the training and the test walk that i did from bombay to pune which i had done to check my strengths and weaknesses but during the training and the test walk at the walk from just a random thought became a challenge dawned upon me that it's not a simple thing because you know you were doing a Four or a five kilometer, or even a ten kilometer a day walk, which is like a, a simple workout that you do, and walking from Bombay, uh, Andheri to Morjan Beach in Goa, which is five hundred and eighty-two kilometers, is not simple at all. So suddenly, it became a really, really strong thought and a life-changing experience. I would say it was more about challenging ourselves and. seeing if we could do it because you know when we reckied we realized that it's not simple you know when i just saw the road and prashant and i were on the in the car and i was like dude why are we doing this because it's really long i mean the road doesn't end you know so so it was <laughs> that thought did occur but um that's when it became a challenge that's when it was like dude you know now we have to do it because it's not simple and we're not made for simple stuff so yeah so you had like a test walk from mumbai to pune is it <laughs> yes and how long did that take So, but the test walk took took six days. It was from Bombay to Pune, and this this was suggested to me by my physio, who uh, the moment uh, I thought about walking from Bombay to Goa, we saw this physio, my husband's friend, and he trains Mary Com, and he sits in the panel of uh, Olympics Gold Quest. So after calling me a psycho, he told me that I should actually walk from Bombay to Pune just to check if my body would uh, support me in this task. and it took us 6 days bombay to pune was just me and my husband he was following me in the car behind me and i was walking while walking it would be say a 10 to 15 minute break after around 7 to 10 kilometers okay then we would just book a hotel we would every day after finishing the finishing the walk we would look for hotels okay so what was your and, normal day typically like uh, you know a typical day would start with wake up call of you know at around 4:30 Mm-hmm. and would get ready and <clears throat> reach the walking spot by around 6 a.m. uh warm up and then i started the i i started walking at the first light so 6 o'clock or max by 6:30 i would start and this break was important because when i'm walking for a 10 km distance it is my feet would swell up you know obviously so i had to actually sit in the car and just massage my feet i would just apply vaseline then around 12 o'clock because you know obviously the sun was um at its right. peak then to where we would stop and we would take like a two hour break figure out a good dhaba where we could eat nice food and just rest there uh, and that was also because we were also shooting it on the way so we would also you know sort of charge our batteries and it was also the break was also required to charge our batteries and you know maybe copy the footage in case the cards were full and all that then we would start around 2 2 to 30 and then we would walk till 6 or 7 o'clock in the evening 
and then I would go back to the hotel. You know, the hotels either were say 10 kilometers away from wherever we stopped or it was just close by. That that actually depended on where we halted. Uh, then we would ice my feet, do some cool down exercises because foam roll and that's it. No, we would work on the images as well. I would work on the images and we would write the walk uh, uh, write-ups for the page that we had on Facebook. By around 10.30, all of us were, we would just crash. So tell me one thing, Archer. You know, most of us, I mean, the first thought that really came to my mind when I read about your work was, we really are very skeptical or we are not very ready to get out of our comfort zones. How difficult mm -hmm. was it for you or how easy was it for you to do that, to really get out of your comfort zone and decide that, okay, I want to do this crazy walk from Mumbai to Goa? And before answering this question, I'll tell you uh, a little about the company that my husband and myself give founded. founded. It's mm -hmm. called The Audacious Project and the walk which was called Two Feet and a Dream was our first project. The Audacious Project is about certain things that uh, like the walk that we've done and many other things that we will do that will force us or make us to get out of our comfort zone and not just us but my friends and you know people who are uh, watching us or checking us out on Facebook or you know wherever else for us particularly honestly it wasn't very difficult because you know we decided because it's a walk and it will take say around 30 days which means we had to lose out on a lot of work I walked in October which is a good time for you know the weddings start and my husband was uh, he, he's, he's an art film director so we had consciously decided that we will not take up some projects so only the only work wise it was difficult for us we had to make the, make that call but even that wasn't because you know we had to prioritize one thing and we were really really passionate about this walk yeah that's it so not that difficult so tell me what kept you going through those long hours of walking what would you think what would what would go on in your mind when you're walking and walking and walking on those entirely super long highways that would never end <laughs> yes um yeah, I know it's it's you can you can think you can ponder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, were you thinking of your your life? Were you thinking of your career? Were you thinking of your marriage? Were you thinking of your child? You know, honestly, during my training, I thought about it a lot. But during the actual walk, I could not think about anything. I thought, you know, because, you know, so I'm a photographer and. It was it was very very difficult to not photograph on the road. Okay, right. so it was really <laughs> challenging. For me. Actually, that was really challenging. And so the only task that I had was to walk. Okay, and I thought, okay, let it be. I'm gonna think about ideas, and I'm gonna come back and shoot and you know, do that. This during the actual walk, I could not think of anything because of the the noise on the highway or because of so many other things that we were you know we because we were shooting so constantly talking to each other about you know okay you know can you walk on the other side of the road? Can you do this? Can you do that? All that was happening. Thankfully, I, chaos does not disturb me so much. So yes, it was noisy on the highway. We Indians will really honk. We just love it. We yeah. just love it. So, <laughs> so I observe things, and I am I am quite a good observer. So I would observe people, their faces, and I think the photographer in me would also do that. So I remember this one man I asked. He did not know Hindi or English, and I did not know. I don't know Marathi as much. So you know, in Tuti Bhuti Marathi, I was talking to him and. I would take his picture mm. and I was really excited finally I got one subject we had a walkie talkie where I would through which I could con uh, contact my people so I just told Pushan that you know okay I got somebody I want to shoot him I want to shoot a portrait <laughs> and this guy said okay he'll charge money yeah so I was I lost interest immediately my husband who was by my side throughout really 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 kept me going especially in the mornings and I would wake up and I would just grip that I do not want to do it you know and he would just he really really took care of it and I had to do it for him. Puna and Gob both, it's also the people that kept us going. It's my father who would, who is generally, he does not express so much, but then he would go to everybody and talk about how his daughter was walking and he would share it on Facebook. And I think people's wishes and their support also kept me going. Fabulous. What is the one thing, or what are those several things that you really took away from this walk? Like maybe 26 days earlier, you were a different person, but after 26 days, these were your learnings that, oh my God. Any oh my god moments? Oh yeah, lots of them. That we have bad people in the country or bad people in the world but they are good people also. So we know a lot of things. We know India is a beautiful country. I met this this group of people. They actually paint those white lines that you see on the road, mm -hmm. the dividers. So I was walking on the service road and this was around, I don't know, 11, 11, 30. Really, really hot. It was a very bad day, the heat. And I'm walking and I'm seeing these, these men who are making those stripes, who are drawing that on the roads. 
and I just stopped and started talking to them. As I talked to them, they told me that they walk around eight to nine kilometers every day with that heavy machine. And I also painted one of the lines. So one of the lines actually is mine there on oh, that wow. highway. Okay. <laughs> we stopped there to drink sugarcane juice and. He, we just started chatting with him. Again, he's a, um, he, he's, he's Marathi, so he didn't know so much of Hindi, so people had to translate for us. But he told me that he had a four acre land and, and because there was no rains this time, he could only cultivate one acre of it. Three acre of land just went wasted. It's really sad, you know, you see people who are ready to work hard, but they just can't, they have to actually depend on these natural resources and how we are disturbing our nature so much. So, you know, um, he gave us an extra glass of juice and we told him maybe, yeah, no, we obviously refused, but he said, no, no, please have it. And he earned what, 40 rupees? Gave us one extra glass of juice. I, I am an entrepreneur and I, don't do so much. I mean, I will give extra, but I don't think I'll give like this. Then I know I do not have enough for myself. Uh, sugarcane, um, uh, you know, these people who just cut the sugarcane in the field. Their job is just to cut it and give it to the owner of the, the land. Mm -hmm. And I there were these 10, 12 of them and I again entered there because I really wanted to eat sugarcane and I just could not on the road for some reason. So finally, I found a patch where I found these people and I entered there and we started chatting and I actually cut one sugar cane with them and I realized it was so hard. I mean, they were women as thin as I am and as small as I am with the kids on their shoulders and they are still cutting the uh, sugar cane. And so it was difficult, they're still doing it. And you know, after talking to them again, when I was leaving, they said, they asked me to eat breakfast with them. So the breakfast meeting, it was around 8.30, 9 in the morning. They asked me to eat breakfast with them. They said, we have roti and uh, uh, sabzi. So why don't you come eat with us? But we did not have anything. We had only those chips and all. So we couldn't offer them anything, uh, like in terms of proper food. And, and I was I was impressed. I was like, who invites, who invites in cities? Who invites strangers to eat with them? These things will, these experiences will stay with me for life. Uh, so as if walking was not enough for 582 kilometers, there were several challenges. Some of them I was ready for, like the heat. Heat was really, really too much. And also last October was the hottest in I think decades. So I was expecting my feet to suffer a little. I had some boils and you know, had some painful nails. You know, we climbed these Lonavla Ghats and the Ghats beyond Pune it was really, really physically hardest because we also had to climb them during the afternoon. Unfortunately, we lost two of our drone cameras. I mean, we crashed one and we lost the other one. So we were really depressed about that. We were really excited about some of the aerial footage that we had shot and wanted to shoot further. So we also could not take our final climbing shot with the drone. So that was quite depressing. And I think the noise, like I said earlier, the honking that people do. My God, we really should stop honking. So some of the um, challenges I was ready for for but you know being ready for something and actually experience experiencing it are two different things yeah i think i look pretty dark also so the heat and the tan did not do much <laughs> besides that i am a very impatient person i am i am so impatient if i'm standing on a counter at a store i will keep tapping it if until they give me what i want so i just can't wait and here i was i had chosen the slowest spot in the world walking and I couldn't do anything no matter how fast I walked I knew I would reach there in 26 days only you know no matter how much I could how fast I could walk so yeah so it made me I think a little in, a little patient also you know we actually we actually ran in the sugarcane fields we walked inside the fields and um, we climbed a mountain when we finished a half day mark Prashant and I climbed a mountain and we celebrated by climbing the mountain and drinking thumbs up there so good to listen to you Archel what's like the next walk or what's the next audacious project that you're gonna do so the next project's gonna be Prashant he's gonna cycle 5000 plus kilometers <laughs> you guys are insane man <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so we've already uh, almost it's gonna happen next year in February I am super excited for that because I get to shoot Prashant this time and I get to torture him <laughs> oh, as much as we <laughs> 
so yeah it's going to be fun yes super so the next time i interview i'm going to be interviewing prashant i guess yeah. <laughs> yes <laughs> lovely but so good to talk to you anything that you want to say to a lot of us who don't who do not take that leap or you know who do not really have faith whether we can do we cannot do anything that you just want to shout out uh this is for everybody and especially for women we really need to think the moment we start thinking we will start expressing we can do what we want to do cuz you know i had the support of my husband or my family and everybody but if i hadn't thought about this i wouldn't have expressed it i wouldn't have done it so think about what you want to do i'm not saying leave your families i'm not saying leave your kids don't do that but just think about yourself once think about what you want to do find your audacious uh my audacious was to walk from bombay to go up your audacious could be to i don't know go bald to you know drive every night or do whatever you want to do but just find your thing and do it just buy a blackboard and write do on it just do it fab I'm going bald you also went bald why <laughs> uh, again i don't know uh it's something i really wanted to do and uh, <clears throat> Fortunately I am an impulsive person so I thought again the thought entered my mind and I was like okay let's go for it so yeah I did get it it's liberating we must fab, do it fab very good talking to you Archer thank you so much very insightful interview I hope I can put up all of this but uh whatever I put up I think people out there who are going to be listening to you I'm sure they're going to get audacious in their own little way I hope so and thank you so thank much for being a part of let's think aloud.com thank you Himani thank you very much for having me here